Good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending tonight's lecture. This session is part of the PGS lecture series for this year. I'm Oni Martinez, a member of the Philippine Geographical Society, and I will be your host for tonight's webinar. The Philippine Geographic Society launched this lecture series last January, and tonight is the second of the series of lectures and discussions on various geographic themes and issues that are of interest to you and folks from various fields and areas of practice. This event is also co-sponsored by the UP Department of Geography. Our audience and viewers can join tonight's discussion and interact with our guest speaker through the Department of Geography's YouTube channel, where you can watch the session being streamed simultaneously, and you can also send your comments and questions from there. Those who registered for the event, on the other hand, are participating in this session via Zoom. Uh, you, if you want to invite your friends and other people from your network, you can still do that before we begin with tonight's program. Feel free to share the link to our YouTube live streaming through your social media accounts and other online channels. To commence with this webinar, let's briefly go over the house rules for this session. Just like tonight's topic for discussion, we'd like to adhere to these guidelines to ensure that we are doing our part in promoting safe online spaces for exchanging ideas and for sharing constructive comments on tonight's theme. To ensure a smooth and engaging discussion, please keep your microphones on mute until the organizers acknowledge that it is your turn to speak. And since we are uh, streaming live uh, via the UP Department of Geography's YouTube channel, we encourage you to post your comments, reactions, and questions via YouTube and through other social media pages, and also through the, the Zoom chat box for those who joined us via Zoom. Later in the program, we will assist our resource speaker in responding to most, if not all, of the questions and comments that you would raise. Please also note that this session is being recorded for documentation purposes. If you have any question or concern in this regard, please message us, uh, send us a message through the Zoom chat box. And lastly, we will announce a photo opportunity towards the end of this session. So kindly get ready uh, to turn on your camera when we give you the cue, if you would like to be part of the group photo. And so to formally open tonight's session, let me call the president of the Philippine Geographical Society, a colleague from the Department of Geography, Professor Emmanuel Garcia, to welcome our participants. Hi, um, isang magandang gabi sa ating lahat. Uh, we are on another episode of the Philippine Geographical Society Lecture Series for 2021. On behalf of the Philippine Geographical Society and the UP Department of Geography, I am happy to welcome everyone this evening. Um, like what Oni said, no, the PGS Lecture Series is part of our objectives to popularize the discipline of geography in lieu of an actual national conference on geographical studies. But we are really keeping our fingers crossed that we have one this year. Uh, we are really fortunate to have our research speaker agree to share the research with us. And for tonight, we will have a colorful discussion about participatory mapping of LGBT experiences and safe spaces. So just a preview, we did the word cloud of the keywords from the registration, and this is what it looks like. No? So siguro nung makita natin yung, yung, yung team natin, this is what we're thinking about. No? Uh, movement, diverse complex, inclusive. So, medyo dominant yung word na exclusive. No? From this, we hope to have an insightful discussion as our speaker sheds light on his experiences navigating this topic. Thank you, and I hope we have another special Saturday evening. Thank you so much, Prof. Garcia. And we are also delighted and honored to be joined tonight by the Queen Queer Mapper, who is known among members of the mapping community in the Philippines as the founder of MapBex and a leading advocate of safe spaces for the LGBTQ plus in the country. He is currently affiliated with the Humanitarian Open Street Map Team, or HOT, where he serves as community manager for Asia and the Pacific Hub. He is also one of the esteemed Filipino Open Street Map volunteer mappers, uh, recognized globally as a voting member of the humanitarian OSM. His organization, MapBex, is an OSM Foundation microgrant awardee for the ongoing project on mapping HIV facilities in the Philippines on OSM and for the recently launched project entitled Unmapped PH. 
you know, has worked with various humanitarian NGOs like the Philippine Red Cross, Cord Aid, the Asia Foundation, and UN Habitat to lead tonight's discussion on participatory mapping of LGBT experiences and safe spaces. Please welcome Mr. Nico Tamura. Hello, everyone. Oh, thank you very much, Mom Oni, for the wonderful and flattering, para, <laughs> flattering introduction. Um, eh, should I go ahead and proceed na po ba? Yes, yes, please. Yes, yes. Thank you. okay, thank you. And thank you very much for having me here uh, uh, to PGS and the UP, and UP Department of Geography. So even as a student on 2010, <laughs> pangarap, uh, pangarap ko talaga makapag-talk through the PGS. And uh, thank you very much, Sir Palis and Sir Eman, Ma'am Oni, Ma'am Mads, for, and, and all of the faculty of the, of the department for inviting me to share my experiences uh, through this uh, webinar. So I'll just share my screen and then uh, let's hop into the presentation. Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, so this presentation would be called Mapping LGBT Safe Spaces and Experiences because I would like to share in this uh, presentation uh, my journey, MapPEX's journey, and what are the methodologies we specifically use uh, in really pursuing uh, our advocacy, especially in the mapping community. Uh, we would also like to share our, our other projects currently being developed. And at the same time, uh, we would like to encourage other people to try and explore uh, the world of mapping and maybe ayun din, makapag ambag sa lipun. Charot lang, joke lang. So I'll make it very light uh, naman uh, this, uh, this po, I'll make the conversation light naman so para lang available siya for your Saturday evenings na hindi tayo mag-uusap ng, ng bonggang-bonggang mga teorya ganyan. So uh, isang segue to for tonight. So I, I, again, I'm Nico. Uh, currently, I'm with HOT, and uh, I was the lead advocate of MapPex. Yeah. So yeah. So on uh, end of this, our our discussion for tonight would include a basic situationer of the LGBT community. Para lang meron tayong context kung ano yung ginagalawan ng LGBT community natin uh, right now. Uh, then I'll go through topics such as the LGBT Safe Spaces Project, uh, which was hosted by MapBex, and really dissect the methodology and the tools that were used uh, to map things out. Uh, and I'll just run through a quick demo as well on how to contribute using uh, the, the maps that we made and deep dive with MapBex stories. So aside from uh, mapping out LGBT safe spaces, we'll be sharing a tool that we developed with mental health awareness, wherein we document uh, uh, stories or shared experiences by the LGBT community. So just a quick situation there. So this would be a quick collage of, uh, of some things that I just pulled up in the internet or on Google it. So we have here on the left would be Jennifer Laude, Gretchen Diaz, and Marla Lato, Mara Latore. And, and so these are uh, trans women that have been, have experienced discrimination in the past. So for example, we know Jennifer Laude was murdered uh, by Pemberton, Char, <laughs> uh, and Diaz and Latore experienced discrimination, especially when they were disallowed to use the CR uh, uh, when they wanted to use it. Uh, so, kitang kita sa mga examples na to ang, ang, ang forma ng discrimination na, na experience, lalo ng ating mga trans siblings all over the Philippines. So, these are the ones that was caught by the media. But in reality, there are thousands or even millions of cases that discrimination is being uh, experienced by various uh, members of the LGBT community and varying degrees. So even I, uh, growing up as a kid, I've been a victim with discrimination, especially bullying uh, with school in, in schools. And 
Luckily, in UP naman, hindi ko naman na-experience ng buhay. Subukan lang nila. Ano, charot lang. Ayan. Uh, another side of the community, if you could see, is uh, the picture of the 2019 uh, Metro Manila Pride Parade in Marikina. So this recorded a uh, record-breaking 75,000, more than 75,000 people in one area. So kung may COVID nung time na to, <laughs> siguro may 75,000 na, 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 ano, na may COVID na naman. Pero uh, just to make a point, uh, it was a very big celebration of pride, love, and and, and, and power na that that uh, that shook actually the world, getting that uh, that attention in one, one specific event. Uh, on the other side, we also have the situation of the pink peso. So there are a lot of economies right now as well, uh, even before the pandemic that was supported highly by the LGBT community. So uh, usually uh, gays prefer a specific hotel that, that, are, that are not that judgmental or rest or, or when when couples go out on a date, gusto nila siyempre yung mga magiging comfortable sila were in... Uh, na wherein they could be themselves. So itong mga types of economies have been uh, supported by a very, very, very wide network of LGBT connections. So makik- na-prove din naman na ang, ang, ang market ng LGBT ay malaki. Especially when it comes to, when it comes to yung Pride, uh, Pride Month, dumada- dumadating na dyan yung mga Pride socks, Pride flags, Pride everything. Uh, so talaga naging hook siya. So, another side of the situation here would be the SOJ Quality Bill na hanggang ngayon, anong panahon nate hindi pa rin na ipapasa na ano ba naman yung ibigyan natin ng equal right na to from any form of discrimination ang ating mga LGBT brothers and sisters na pinapalaki, pinapalaki ang, ang, ang pinapalaki daw ang pinapalaki ng problema ng mga LGBT and they were asking for special rights ba ito Be, ang LGBT, <laughs> hindi ganun kagrabe ang hinihingi when it comes to this law. So, ayun. Uh, so, and, and on the other part, we have anti-discrimination ordinances in various parts of the country uh, that are shown in the rightmost picture. The, the areas that are pink are, are locations where there are ADOs. So, ADOs pretty much protect the LGBT community or uh, any individual with diverse SOGI, SC, Uh, from any form of discrimination. So if in case you are being discriminated in this area based on your gender, uh, race, color, uh, etc., etc., uh, these places are pretty much protected by that ADOs. To what extent have been, are this, these laws uh, implemented? That is... Uh, so pretty much, kung makikita niyo yung areas sa City level, we can say that LGBTs at those areas are somehow protected, right? So you could also see on the map that there are areas in various parts of the Philippines that have LGBT organizations. So pinapakita lang din ito yung sobrang laking network ng LGBT um, based on my experiences on the field. Uh, na, masasabi ko din na kahit sa ang barangay ako magpupu- magpumunta and I, uh, when I get to talk to an LGBT uh, person in that barangay, ma- ma-feel mo that... Uh, you are very welcome and they can give you the information that you need. So it's it's a very wide network all over the country. So enough with the, the situation. So nakikita niyo napakagulo. May batas na pinapatay mismo ng mga nasa Senado at Kongreso. May mga organizations na napakarami. May mga cases of discrimination. You have a booming econo- economy uh, being empowered by uh, a, a marginalized population. And you have a pride parade that is very very big biggest in asia in fact pero kita mo yung disconnect ng ano ng ng mga bagay-bagay din so in line with that uh, i'd like to introduce two important uh, things uh, about when we say we are mapping lgbt safe spaces especially in the case of mapbex is first yung lgbt safe spaces project ni Mapbex, wherein it is a collaborative project that aims to map out LGBT safe spaces in the Philippines. Uh, and Queer Map by Kiku, an online mapping platform that can be used to locate LGBT safe spaces all over the world. So pretty much, yung idea here is yung mapping project ni si Mapbex ang nagko-collect ng data, nagbabalidate, nag, 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 ano, nagpa-process tong data, and it is being... Uh, Visualized. Pinapakita to sa website na Queer Map by Kiko, which is uh, a German. Kiko is a German developer 
uh, na nagsusupport sa Mapdex uh, through this endeavor. Yeah. So you can visit the website later, ito, mapdex.org. So I'll, I'll go through it later. So pretty much, ano ba yung naging journey? Ba't kami napadpad dito? Sa pagmamapa ng ano. So as a vol open suite map volunteer, I have been to uh, a lot of remote areas in the country and helping communities put uh, their communities dun sa open street map. So bakit open street map? Kasi OSM is an open source editable version of the world, uh, editable map of the world, wherein if you want to put uh, something on the map and be represented on the map, pwedeng pwede mong ilagay on your own time, log in ka lang sa open street map, Uh, add a point and put a tag on it. Ayan. And it would be rendered through visually sa OSM. So hindi siya ganun katagal, similar to other mapping platforms, na it takes you weeks or, or, or months. So dito sa OSM, uh, if I want to rip up put in a uh, parangay hall on the map, so isang remote area, I just log in, put it on the map, and then after a few minutes, it, it, it is reflected on the map. And at the same time, the data that you put on OpenStreetMap can be also accessible by Uh, by everyone. So downloadable ang lahat ng data na nakikita sa OSM. This includes roads, streets, land cover. So it's about more or less you being creative kung ano itong gusto nyong imapa and ano yung pwedeng ipakita sa OpenStreetMap. So among others ga, itong, itong sa OpenStreetMap ay merong mga tags na tinatawag. So geographically, technically speaking, ito yung attributes na nakikita natin sa isang uh, map. So Uh, for example, when you say region, region 4, uh, when you say name of a province, uh, pwede ng Cavite. So ito yung attributes na meron sa OpenStreetMap na nilalagay doon. So ito yung tags na sinasabi. So among others, the common tags that I've been using in my work were buildings, uh, when I need to create a building on OSM, uh, when I need to identify a residential area or a village, I use land use residential, highway, when you add roads, and hospitals, similarly with schools as well. So among others, I was exploring uh, OpenStreetMap tagging and saw that there was a tag for LGBT spaces. So pretty much it was LGBTQ primary. And mula dun sa idea ng yun, I explored a bit and checked OpenStreetMap, especially in the Philippines, kung ano ba yung mga places na may LGBT tag or LGBTQ tag primary. So, then and there, nakita ko na wala namang, walang ni isang uh, lugar that was tagged in OSM that had that uh, description. So, pretty much, sabi ko, wow, uh, I'm, I'm advocating for OSM, I'm advocating open data, and I'm advocating mapping, pero bakit po yung mga spaces that matter to my community, wala doon, hindi siya nare-represent sa mapa. So, similarly, ayun nga din, ganun na, uh, I went to... Uh, Dampathon by Mental Health Awareness by, by Sandra Tabinas na nakita ko din that if you would want to be on the map, ikaw, ikaw mismo ang gagawa ng paraan. It's not something na, na ano. So doon parang nahawa ako sa advocacy niya of mapping mental uh, health uh, services pero uh, we directed it towards the needs of the LGBT community. So from there, I googled and, and, and researched on LGBT safe spaces or friendly spaces in Metro Manila muna and we came up with various articles. So itong articles na to, eh, makikita mo, nandun yung mga name ng mga LGBT safe spaces. Okay, sige, given na publicly available naman and, and they, they themselves declare it naman uh, with that. So when you go to Google din naman, Google Maps, when you say, see LGBT, LGBT something, LGBT dun sa... Google Maps sa Metro Manila, you'll see na may madaming list na lilitaw ng spaces pero hindi mo madedetermine na are, these are really LGBT safe spaces. Hindi ko rin, I, I also question kung ano yung algorithm na ginagamit ni Google kung bakit yun yung natuturo. For example, when you search LGBT uh, maps, uh, one entry would be Ateneo de Manila University and uh, kumbaga meron ganong parang hindi kompleto yung data na on makikita mo what what with what you see online and and uh, and I think important siya kasi may mga tao very visually represented to see or they need to to look up yung nearest LGBT uh, space na na kung saan sila so with the compilation of data that we gathered namin uh, and we created a mini database 
uh, so that we could also collect more information. So I think number four, we get the name, contact number, address, ganyan, ganyan. So basically, yung data lang makukuha mo, yung generic directory book, phone book data. Uh, but you'll be, uh, you, you'll observe na ni isa mga to, wala pa open street map. So these spaces pala that are actually pinupuntahan ng mga LGBT crowd ay hindi na represent dun sa uh, pinaka pinaka map na sinusuportahan ko. So dun dun na kumbaga na na, na, na realize na ipasok. So, it's important kasi these spaces are real spaces on the ground. So bakit hindi siya ma-represent dun sa open street map? So ayun nga, pinush namin na mailagay namin yung spaces na to. But amazingly some of the spaces that uh, you could see here are tagged as uh, something else like for example a coffee shop uh, uh, for example uh, ano yun yung coffee shop na so for example ito yung some coffee shop na to uh, nakatag siya sa OSM na amenity cafe but in reality the coffee shop is actually an avid LGBT supporter and they declare themselves as an LGBT safe space so inad lang namin basically yung LGBTQ equals primary tag dun sa feature tapos uh, it was then uh, rendered in OpenStreetMap as an LGBT space. Yeah. So, meron na marami kaming nakuha naman. So, from our crowdsourcing, we actually got 50 plus. Pero the amazing thing that came in towards uh, these, these, these data na nakuha namin was when we launched our crowdsourcing and participatory data collection uh, activities. So, ito yung mga mapathons namin, mapping, ta mapping events, when we invite various organizations and individuals uh, sa LGBT community and also allies so that they can add to that directory, directory ng mga LGBT safe spaces and the likes. So, ayun yung data na ginagawa namin ngayon is we collect, we collate, we validate itong nakukuha namin from uh, the events that we hold and then we visualize it and we upload it on the various mapping pl platforms that we have. So, kanina nabanggit ko yung Clear Map by Kiko. Um, so, hindi yun yung pinaka-kwento kung, kung bakit nandun kami ngayon. <laughs> so, dumaan ang MapDeck sa napakaraming tools upang gamitin sa kanya-kanyang participatory and crowdsourcing uh, activities. So, note, let us please take note that uh, not all available data can be uploaded on OSM. So, data that can be uploaded on OSM uh, Ang dapat, ang very important data dyan is local knowledge. So you cannot, you cannot put data for what you, what you have on Google directly to OpenStreetMap. So it should always be backed up by local knowledge. So for example, may nakita akong tindahan sa Google, ay, sa Google, um, hindi ko pwedeng ilagay lang siya directly to OpenStreetMap unless I can back it up with my own experience or local knowledge that yes, there is a store there and ito yung location niya based on my knowledge. So gumamit kami ng iba't 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 ibang participatory and crowdsourcing tools such as Una, Canvas App, MapConTrip, and UMap. And uh, eventually, lumipat na lang kami to uh, key, Queer Map by Keycube. Uh, so ito yung iba't ibang tools na ginamit when we engage with community. So Una, I'd like to introduce Canvas App. Uh, this is a tool that is very, very powerful actually and user-friendly. So if you want to conduct a crowdsourcing uh, mapping activity, this would be an awesome tool. Uh, the problem is lang it is a paid service. Pero if you are a non-profit organization or you are a... Uh, you can pretty much reach out to the team and get a discount version or a free account. Like for example, kami sa MapDex, we were able to get a free account uh, kasi eme, <laughs> binawala na namin, charot lang. Ayan. Uh, it uses Mapbox API where yung Mapbox API gumagamit ng OSM data. So pretty much, yung map niya ay based on open. Kaya pwede siyang gamit you use your participatory tools. So among all the we've tried sa Mapbox, ito yung masasabi kong pinaka-user-friendly. Ito rin yung ginagamit, ginamit ng namin sa department ng students na para i-map out yung mga na feel namin last sem, ganyan. Uh, this amazing tool then can also upload uh, pictures and it's also a survey tool. So pwede yung i-fashion yung uh, uh, visualization yung based on your survey, based on the answers, ganyan, etc. Uh, another tool that we use was MapConTrip. Ito OG. Ito yung kauna-unahan. 
uh, it uses the OSM base map. So kudos, pwede siyang gamitin agad si OSM. Uh, it can also pull out OSM data. So for example, yung example, uh, for example, dito sa picture that I showed, ito yung space location ng mga pet shops uh, in Metro Manila uh, that was pulled out from OpenStreetMap. So gumagamit siya ng Overpass Turbo, another tool, MAM, technical shiz, ganyan. <laughs> Pero basically, kung nasa OSM siya, mapapull out itong map na to at mapapresent yun. And it uses uh, pop-ups. Uh, this is free. Pero yung visuals niya is very limited. So, hindi mo pwedeng laruin yung ganda niya or what. So, may mga limitations na. And lastly, we have UMAP, which is an OSM, uh, which is based from OSM. <clears throat> so, pretty much, uh, it's a collaborative map. So, it's very similar to my maps ng Google. Pero ito is open source, free, and the data is readily available for everyone. Uh, um, without OSM data, pero you cannot add delete OSM. Unlike with him, pag mo yung boto and you want to add something, automatic mo siya sa OSM. Map, uh, different things. So it way lang na more uh, pulling out data lang siya. So it depends. Usually these tools uh, depend on ano yung approach na kailangan nyo, ano yung, kailangan, uh, ano yung gagamitin nyo, at ano yung maiintindihan din ng tao. So another thing I'm trying to explore then is yung Jamboard wherein, di ba, everyone can actually... Uh, put in sticky notes, pins, draw, every, ganyan, eme. So parang naisip ko is doing a jam board na nandun yung buong mapa ng area na gusto ko yung map. Tapos people can just put in some sticky notes, some circles, lines, colors. So it's more about uh, exploring then yung ano yung uh, mga potential na pwedeng gamitin tools for crowdsourcing and participation. So very powerful, powerful, powerful to kasi sobrang dami ng pumasok na data namin na hindi mo expect na lilitaw. Like, who would have thought that there was an LGBT organization in Rapu Rapu Island uh, represent then ang, ang, ang Iloilo with, and, with, with their LGBT safe spaces and organizations. Kaya sobrang nakakag, nakakagulat din wow, with the amazing uh, tool at yung data na nakuha namin through these methods. So, um, I'll do... Uh, siguro, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll just post this link na lang. But pretty much, uh, when you go to uh, the map, dun yung queer map by Kiko, or this link, ay pwede nyong makita yung uh, mga safe spaces that were identified. So, bakit paano siya napunta sa mapa? So, pretty much, yung method lang naman na ginawa namin dyan is uh, validating the information that we collected online and through the crowdsourcing methods that we have. Una sa lahat, when a person goes to the map and nominates an LGBT safe space, it pretty much add, uh, they add the information uh, and, and way uh, mas, ma mas ma research namin yung isang lugar. For example, I nominated LGBT San, San Julian, uh, ganyan. Uh, I added some details, phone number, name, address, ganyan. Pretty much, we have that information stored uh, using yung map that we developed. So yung map na yon it just stores it in the back end at hindi naman niya linalabas agad yung information. So may mga screening process din kami ginagawa. So what we do when we get that nomination from someone, we try to contact that nomination and inform them that they have been nominated and ganyan, MAM. So we then try to validate that information na nakuha namin. And lastly, we can come into an agreement na uh, or MOA that we that declaring that that they are being declared as an LGBT safe space. So ideally, uh, as as you remembered in my part of the presentation, we have this anti-discrimination ordinances in cities, and that doesn't protect everyone. So you have, for example, uh, 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 for example, Marikina. You have your uh, uh, technically Marikina is that an does not have nawala or nawala yung ADO nila. So pretty much, what protects the people there? So this effort of MAPBEC, it tries to secure an anti-discrimination ordinance or a memorandum of agreement with that uh, space, whether it's a cafe, a bar, a gym, a uh, 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 organization, saying na uh, no form of discrimination uh, can be there. Kaya pinupush namin na yung mga safe spaces that we put on open street map, similarly dun sa queer map by Kiku, ay magkamowa kami the, declaring that they are a safe space para meron din tayong uh, documentation and, and agreement that uh, 
uh, they signed this so that they are so that they can be put on the map. Pretty much, it's also a form of protection for the LGBT community. So as if they go there and maka experience sila ng any form of discrimination with that service or workplace or anything, protected sila ng mowa na ginamit na ginawa ni Mac. Um, ayun. So pretty much yun yung kwento namin with the LGBT safe spaces mapping. Um, I would share the link na lang sa chat. Ayan. So that you could visit it. So using this map, you could actually uh, add, edit, and delete any information that you see. Pero hindi siya lilitaw agad sa OSM. So once we have validated or once the team has validated the information, doon pa lang namin siya ina-upload. Ayan. Sa chat ko na lang. Ayan. Doon pa lang namin siya ina-upload para naman doon uh, safe din yung ano namin, pangalan namin. Charot. Ayan. So, mo, so kung isipin nyo, hindi ba delikado kung bakit mo minamapa yung mga lugar na to? Hindi ba ano, uh, hindi ba dangerous o dangerous nga? Ika nga. Uh, There is a certain danger if you uh, <clears throat> there is there will always be a certain danger when you put things on the map, especially such, with such vulnerable cases such as the LGBT community. And ganun din ang case ay, ay uh, indigenous people. Kaya uh, linalain ni Mapbex na ang, ang mga safe spaces that we try to map are accordingly na may consent yung space na linalagay namin. Secondly, Uh, if you need a directory of lahat ng, ng Becky doon sa area nyo, uh, I suggest Mapdex wouldn't be that platform. Uh, uh, there, uh, I, I suggest Grindr. Uh, uh, click lang po kayo doon, kompleto na po yung lista ng LGBT within a, a 6km radius. Ganyan. Pero uh, there is strength in numbers. And as you could see, when you, when you, you see things visually, uh, napakarami palang LGBT safety. spaces in Quezon City. Wow, 'di ba? So parang ito yung impact na meron ang mga ang mga bags, itong mga LGBT. Ang dami namin safe spaces para sa queers and daming supporters. Bakit hindi nyo gawing LGBT uh, uh hindi nyo hindi nyo gawa ng anti-discrimination ordinance? So doon na nakikita na parang through maps we are asserting existence and power then uh, to be evident doon sa mga nagde-decide on mga decision makers or no makers ganyan, 'di ba? So, uh, I shared the link so pwede niyo na explore 'yan. So, pwedeng mag-add kayo diyan, pwede niyo i-edit din yung information ganyan and everything. Uh, but I'll jump towards yung mapping yung LGBT experiences. Ha? So, um so there has already been a map uh na tinatawag na querying the map na Linux I think in early 2010s ganyan. And sobrang dami niya na. Sobrang, so when you visit there, hindi mo, ma, hindi mo na magagalaw yung map. Sobrang dami at bagal niya na. But, but amazing, hindi makikita niyo na these are stories shared by various LGBT individuals all over the world. Especially, ayan. Ayan. So when you zoom into the Philippines, sobrang bagal na talaga yung internet ng, ng, ng website. Hindi ko na makaka-zoom in sa Pilipinas. At hindi ko na may enjoy siya. So we thought mental health awareness, partnering with mental health awareness of creating a more localized version where people can use and parang ginagamit din namin siyang um, icebreaker usually, usually when our events. So ayun. So ano ba yung pinaka sense nito? Wait lang. Ayan. Ayan. So ano ba ang pinaka sense nito? So we think, uh, we believe that in Mapdex that different spaces evoke different emotions for different people. So specifically, for example, etong tatlong lugar na nilagay ko dito, I'll give time naman. Um, when you see a CR, ganito, what are the what emotions actually ang nakipipil nyo agad? So you could put it in the chat. Ayan, chat lang kayo ng mga emotions. So kung nakikita nyo yung CR na ganito, anong naiisip nyo? Ay, baby! Physical girls. Yeah. Possibility. Comfort <laughs> with a P. Yeah. So, in some people, for some people, they are very much traumatized entering a CR because they would feel judged. Uh, for example, schools, ano, a classroom, what do you imagine? Nyo? 
Ano yung feelings na nag-evoke pag when you when you, when you go to a classroom? Fear. Fear talaga. So pare-pareho pala tayo. So ayun. So in, in some for some people, yung classroom naman is uh nag natutuwa, na excited siguro kasi ayaw nila magstay sa bahay kaya mas nag-enjoy sila sa ako. So and and lastly, jolly bee sa feel ko, wow. ano yung ano, ano yung emotions na ini-evoke na to? Ay nako, true yung <laughs> true. Galit 'yun, galit yung ano. Pagsugod sa mga classrooms. So sa feel ko, well, for some people, gutom or all-nighter, yan yung mga ano, na, pagod kapag nakikita ang feel ko. Well. For some naman, kinikilig kasi baka doon yung first date nila, ano, ni Joa, ganyan. So mapapansin nyo, iba-iba talaga ang, ang, ang mga places para sa iba't ibang tao. So basically, uh, with the concept of uh, gender being something that transcends then various societal issues, age, uh, uh, So, uh, social status, uh, race, di ba? It includes that. Iba rin yung nagiging lente na binibigay ng gender. Especially, uh, iba ang lente din ng LGBT on various things. So, ayun nga. So, with that, we explored using uh, LGBT safe spaces uh, and, and, and converting it to experiences. So, we tried mapping out experiences. Uh, by the LGBT community. Ito yan. Wait lang. Ayan. Ayan. So ito yung map backstory. So people can just actually go to this website and uh, put a pin, add a code name, and share their story. So makikita. So may mga stories dito ang medyo uh, may, di ba kita? Wait lang. Ayan. Okay. So may mga stories dito PG uh, 35 charot. Pero pinopromote talaga namin yung ano, makapag-share yung mga tao ng stories nila uh, of love, life, lust, emancipation, bullying, discrimination and all of the sorts para uh, we could document then and makikita din natin that various places pala may mga meaning pala yung mga era. So it's up to the part, the person naman to see kung gaano ka specific yung area na gusto niyang i-map kung mismong bahay ba nila or what pero we try to filter uh, data na kung saan medyo uh, malicious yung intention ng ano nila so for example so may mga PGM dito ah so kindly uh, protect charot yeah so may mga tao nagkukuwento we met online and we see uh, we and we were in a mutual understanding MMM so may mga ganung kwento na si-share niya So bakit importante ito? Kasi emotionally, ang tao, they want to be feel, feel felt. Uh, they want to feel na may nakikinig. So eventually, we did this platform para may lugar din na pwede silang mag-share anonymously. And uh, at the same time, they could also listen to other stories na yung kwento o yung pinagdadaanan nila, hindi lang naman sila nag-iisa. So pretty much, nag-vary like, yung mga emotions ng mga lugar na to. So, may mga, mga pins kang makikita sa UP, for example, yan. Pero this map focuses actually on the LGBT experience. So, mga kwentong love, ganyan, kung paano nag-out, may keme sila ng jowa niya, mga ganyan. So, ayun. Pero may mga sweet stories din. Dito ako nag-out sa barkada ko. So, parang ganun. So, parang maisip mo kung benchman ko sa Akad Oval, may mga kwento pala na dumadaloy, dumadaan-daan na doon sa isang ano, bench na, na nakakatuwa naman na, na may value natin. Ayan. So pretty much, I'll go back to my presentation. Ano ba ito? Yeah. Ayan. Ayan. So, what are the other things that MapBex is currently doing? So, ito yung mga, you could visit our website, mapbex.org, uh, and you'll see various maps that we've been, try, we were, we're trying to develop as of now. So, currently, ayan yung LGBT safe spaces map, HIV facilities, MapBex stories. Uh, currently, we're so supporting the Spay Neuter Inform Project uh, for their Spay and Neuter Clinics in the Philippines. So, in, uh, tinutulungan namin sila yung nagka-crowdsource ng data, And then pretty much we validate and we 
put it put the vets and clinics na nag na, 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 na uh, ano nag-neuter na mga pusa at asset. So we're also a helping humanitarian disaster response by mapping very remote area mostly remote areas in the country. So we finished recently 25 towns na uh, in all over uh, Visayas and Mindanao and we are currently targeting Tarlac uh, this 2021. Uh, to map out buildings and roads in, in Tarlac. Kasi na-identify pala namin, si Tarlac has the uh, least number of buildings in Luzon. So knowing na napakaraming tao nakatara din sa Tarlac, uh, very important din na malagay sila sa map. Uh, we are currently contributing with talks with LGBT, CCA, and DRR. So parang ito naman ay lente ng LGBT community, especially in their involvement with uh, policy making with CCA and DRR, yung mga ganyan. Uh, currently, we're mapping out gender neutral restrooms and hormone replacement therapy clinics. Pero mas din develop muna namin yung database before we start mapping. So other than that, we are actually also in, uh, exploring community level mapping focused on the LGBT uh, community eh, para mabigyan ng ibang lente din o yung mga spaces na ginagalaw ng mga tao, uh, especially in the barangay level. Oh. So ayun na let uh, visit mapbex.org ando naman lahat pero pag pasensya niyo na medyo binibuild up pa siya medyo busy pa ang mga tao uh, yun lang uh, anything else ma'am Oni back to you ma'am Oni nakaraos <laughs> Thank you Miko maraming salamat for that enlightening uh, presentation um, ako personally na appreciate ko na, na nabanggit ko rin dun sa chat box kanina that you were able to share the whole mapping process uh, through your presentation. Kasi even if um, perhaps many of those who attended uh, tonight were also interested in the technical aspect, pero it's really a good balance of the technical side and yung also the human side no, of mapping, uh, yung cultural aspect of it. At saka syempre yung, um, yung um, purpose kung bakit natin siya ginagawa. So thank you so much for emphasizing that, Nico. And so at this point, um, we are ready to accept questions and comments from our audience. Um, you can just um, type in your questions dito sa chat box natin sa Zoom. And you can also um, encode your questions and comments sa Facebook and also sa YouTube. All right, so may I just go over the comments from the chat box first? Okay lang ba? Ready, ready ka na Miko, no? Thank you. So we're now at uh, the part of our program where we have an open forum. Um, I shared my uh, comment na earlier, no? So I'll go through uh, the comments of others. So for instance, uh, thank you to Brian Trahano for his comment. Sabi niya, I commend Miko for doing MapDex because it can help us LGBTQ plus and allies to identify places which is LG LGBTQ plus friendly. Also, this site is giving people to participate on mapping places which is inclusive for the LGBTQ plus and provide experiences on the places they went. Right, so that was one comment. Um, would you like to respond to that, Miko? Or would you like me to read a few more comments before ka mag uh, respond? O pwede rin mag respond ka na siguro? Ano daw yung sabi? Na joke. Nabasa ko din kasi ma. Yeah, 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 sure. Oo, nabasa mo rin naman siya. So, should I proceed um, sa ibang comments muna? Okay, so from Romel Panal. Uh, how did the pandemic affect the project? That's a good question, Nico. No? Um, and there's also a question from Albert Yumol. Based on your experience, I suppose, <laughs> what is the most effective way to encourage people to map their experiences? Uh, hashtag citizen mapping. Uh, a very good question and uh, no, reaction then. Thank you for. Um, and we also have another one from Jason Sigales. Or would you want me to, I know, may, may, nababasa mo naman sila isa-isa. No? So siguro I'll go over them and then you can go through each of the comments when you respond. 
And I guess the last comment here is from Jason Sigales. Uh, from the map po sa cover na slideshow, ganun po ba talaga kaunting safe spaces? Ayan, meron beyond Metro Manila and beyond cities. If not, paano po approach ninyo na makover rin po ang other areas? So ayun, Miko, um, ikaw na bahala sa order kung pa paano mag-respond on these comments. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Ay nais ko po kayong imbitan sa susunod pong brown <laughs> sa susunod pong PGS session. Thank you very much and have a great na joke lang. Ayun. Um, so, uh, ano ba? Start tayo kay Sir Romel. So, how did the pandemic affect the project? So, uh, eventually, before the, the pandemic, brainstorming talaga siya. And the pandemic actually launched uh, more uh, things, uh, especially dun for MapBex. So in the case of LGBT safe spaces, and daming spaces actually ang nagsara. And we, it was very hard for us na itanggalin din siya na the map. Pero yun yung actually we represent ni MapBex would be to show yung reality on the ground. Diba? Uh, what we did is we actually stored din yung data ng mga safe spaces na to, such as Tapua Resto Bar. You have, uh, ano ko ba? To, to, date, to date, ano ba? Yung ex-future, ayun. So, yun din, nagsara. So, tinanggal din namin siya sa on the map. Pero what we're trying to do here, and ano yung nagawa din ng pandemic, is that mas napalitaw namin yung mga LGBT organizations uh, that it is actually needed and important that they themselves represent them, the, the, their organizations dun sa map. So, especially in the case, ang daming nanghihingi din ng uh, psychological help or guidance, especially with their sexuality and gender and expression, Uh, we provided avenues then for these individuals na makontakt nila yung tamang or nearest organization that can support their needs uh, or makakausap sila. So, andyan din yung UP Babaylan, Pantay, uh, and dami rin. Uh, we also provided coverage then for uh, LGBT school organizations, especially sa Benil, uh, P- PUP, ganyan, na ma-mainstream at actually maging ma-store lahat sila sa isang database. So if in case you're looking for partners na LGBT, andyan na yung listahan, di ba? Or andyan na itong if you need restaurants that advocate LGBT rights, ito yung listahan. So some of the shops naman, uh, they opened and still catered uh, to the general public na ito, ito pa yung mga bukas. So supportahan natin to mga ka-LGBT kasi syempre, ang laking impact dun on the food and the coffee. Coffee sa yung mga cafe industry na, na ayun, na gusto rin matumulong din ng mga kapang LGBT. So parang na may mainstream namin kung saan din, kung ano yung, ano yung mga bagay-bagay. So, malaking dago kasi then, ano, <laughs> daming data na namawala, dadagdagan yan. So, medyo kailangan fast-paced ka din mag-map and mag-verify. Uh, from the map cover uh, ng slideshow, ganun po ba talagang konting safe spaces beyond Metro Manila? Uh, ay, sorry, kay, kay Bash muna. Hi, Bash! Shout out! Shout out! Ayan. Based on your experience, what is the most effective way to encourage people? Ito yung napakahirap kasi especially sa project namin, ay nahihirapan din kaming mag, mag, ano, maghikayat ng organizations na may ilagay yung space nila sa map. Kasi parang you're becoming vulnerable na when you put yourself on the map na pwede ka maging target ng masasamang elemento. Ganyan. Pero kasi kailangan din natin isipin na kahit wala ka sa map, you can also be a target of uh, these uh, forces na masasama if they want to really target you. Uh, pero kaya din na ang naging focus namin is to map out organizations kasi at least yun, mas concrete, mas stable, mas, mas maraming uh, nagsasama-sama. Uh, but when it comes to experiences, medyo mas, ito yung nakakuha kami ng mas madaling feedback kasi anonymously nakakapagbigay sila ng stories, nakakapagbigay sila ng experiences. And somehow, ewan ko, na-thrill na, na, sila na kinikwento nila itong mga sexy stories nila or yung outing story nila with their parents, ganyan. Kasi na-cherish yung valuable moments na ganun and na-immortalize them through the map. Uh, pero ayun nga, uh, I would like to lead on to dun sa sa statement ni Ma'am Mads even before nga na every, all of this is good and yet, well, kasi its intention is to really bring forth yung LGBT community, especially too much. Pero hopefully in the future nga, uh, sama-sama rin naman kami na nakikiisa na, 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 na sana hindi na na kailangan natin ito imapa kasi 
given na all spaces naman talaga ay safe and away from discrimination. Kasi para ma... Diba? Diba? Alam mo yung mga months. Love, love. Ayan. So, ayun lang, Bash. It's, it's, I think, may factor yung pagiging anonymous. And yung feeling din na when they share this story, it would be listened to. And some someone similar going through that experience ang pwedeng magbasa. And it could inspire him or ganyan. Amen. So, parang it's a sharing process din. Uh, at yun dun, ganun din naman namin pinakit yung map story na sharing is... Sharing is caring. Ayan nga. Uh, what else? So, ganun po ba talaga kakonti yung safe spaces? Ganun talaga. Mahirap mag, maghikayat ng org. Pero when more orgs come out and more businesses say that they're LGBT friendly, they're more more services, more workplace, ganyan. Sunod-sunod na yan. I could feel that there are a lot of uh, LGBT safe spaces. Pero isipin pa rin natin na marami pa rin hindi mulat, hindi naiintindihan ng SOGSC, hindi naiintindihan ng mga bagay-bagay. So, ayun. So, marami, 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 maraming LGBT safe spaces. Maraming, non, maraming LGBT non-safe space din naman. Ayan. Uh, pero we, we still encourage them. Parang tamang pag-encourage lang din. And if there would be a time na wala nang sense na imapa mo rin lahat yan kasi nga ang dami na nalang. Siguro, Siguro kung data namin, 15,000 uh, uh, locations in Metro Manila pa lang. O diba, hindi mo na, wala nang sense na imapa mo yan kasi ang dami na sobra. Na hindi mo na makita yung value din ng data na yan. Pero ayun nga, visually mahirap na siya. Diba? Uh, do you find inequity in participation when it comes to sex gender differences? Uh, equally LGBT, if there are disparities, how may we, may we reach out to those? Ano? Can you please repeat the question? Ma'am, charot lang. I think na meron pa ring inequity, especially with participants. Kung hindi namin ita-target yung participation ng trans community, especially ng lesbian and bisexual community, hindi kami ganun karami makakuha ng information or, or experiences or, or nominations for LGBT safe spaces. So, it should also be strategic kung paano may approach yung mga communities na to. Kasi eventually, gaya nga ng ano, puro Puro sila bakla na naman ang nandyan sa mga events natin. Ganyan. Pero kailangan natin ding i-prioritize yung other community so that we could also uh, get yung representation. Kasi yun naman talaga yung pinupush ni Mapex na ma-represent din yung uh, smallest of the small communities. Ayan. Someone who shared to the map. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Mads. Ayan. Anyway, ma'am, on and back to you. Sarado na po ang karambola at wag na po tayong manugod ng mga <laughs> classroom, guys. Ayan. Maraming salamat, Nico. Baka meron pa mga questions din sa ibang social media natin. <laughs> Sige na. <laughs> Sige na. Thank you, Paul. Uh, pa. Dapat sa follow-up okay. question pala, did you see that, uh, Miko? Yeah? Na... Ah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so... All right. We don't have questions sent from from our other social media aside from the chat box. Going? <laughs> Wala na po bang gusto magtanong? Um, hey, um, yes, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, please. Siguro, ano, I would like to leave a note, a footnote, yeah, yeah. a note to uh, encourage people to try out napping uh, Mapping, make, making mapping as a hobby and, and engaging in it para mas ma-inlove kayo uh, with mapping. So it's not it's not technical, pero yung pinaka-core at importante here is uh, especially uh, andyan na lahat ng technicalities when you draw or uh, when you map roads, buildings, uh, hazards, ganyan. Andyan na yan eh. Pero sometimes uh, try thinking out of the box. <laughs> try mapping things that hindi yung typical na nakikita natin na uh, imamount. And possibly it might, ano, something come, might come out of it. Diba? Ikaw nga, diba, ma'am, Bex, hindi ko naman akalain, ma'am, na babongga to, diba? Kala ko lang, okay, hobby, board up sa bahay, mangulekta tayo ng mga location ng mga uh, bars, ayan, o ng HIV facility, ayan. So, naging, ano, it, it became big. Swerte lang din, ma'am. Thank you po. 
Thank you, Miko. Thank you to our audience for their interesting and thought-provoking questions. And hopefully, um, we had adequate opportunity to address them. Uh, we also wish to thank our guest speaker for tonight, for this session. Um, and so this is the part when we present our certificate of appreciation to Miko Tamura. Can you have that on the slide? Thank you so much. Um, the Philippine Geographical Society and the UP Department of Geography present the certificate of appreciation to Mr. Miko Tamura of MapBex for sharing his valuable insights and expertise as resource speaker for the Philippine Geographical Society Lecture Series 2021, held today, February 20, 2021. Uh, the certificate was signed by the convener of the PGS Lecture Series, Professor Joseph Pallis, um, signed also by the Chair of the Department of Geography, Dr. Yanni Lopez, and signed by the President of PGS, uh, Professor Emmanuel Garcia. Nico muli, maraming salamat sa panahon, no, sa oras. Uh, nakita namin na kahit busy busy yung schedule mo um, at madalas mo na rin itong naiibahagi no, sa iba pang mga uh, opportunities, iba pa pang mga venues, no, walang sawa ayan, si Nico at Mapbex sa pag-advocacya para sa LGBTQ+. Maraming salamat ulit, Nico. Right? Thank you, Thank you so much. So we will be closing our session soon, but before we move to the next part of our program, um, there are some announcements, no, important announcements that PGS would like to share with our viewers. Um, may I call Professor Eman again? Um, I give you the floor now, Sir Eman. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miko. Bago yung closing remarks ni Sir Joseph, siguro, unahin na lang natin yung announcement. Miko, maraming salamat ang saya-sayang makinig sa mga pinagagagawa mo sa buhay. Um, for some announcements lang siguro, no? um, we would like to announce our general call for membership since we have not been um, able to hold yung National Conference on Geographical Studies. Um, gusto namin gamitin tong opportunity ng lecture series natin to announce that the Philippine Geographical Society will be calling for membership um, for 2021. Yung membership po kasi natin is annual. No? Um, we'll be providing incentives like IDs, access to different um, PGS activities and events and marami pa pong iba. But um, we will contact you through email or pwede po natin gamitin yung survey form mamaya sa pagsagot sa, sa, sa survey natin sa lecture series na to. Um, we will con we will be contacting everyone who have participated in our previous discussions in our previous lecture series to reach out to you in case you are interested to be part of the Philippine Geographical Society. Or you can also check our website, phgeographicalsociety.org, um, to know more kung paano sumali sa Philippine Geographical Society. Okay, next. Um, yeah, yung... Um, we would want to improve kasi yung, yung succeeding lecture series po natin. So we'd like to encourage our participants to accomplish yung ating survey form for this. Um, we will be providing the link sa chat box, pero andito din ng po siya. Please kindly fill up the survey. Um, ito rin yung avenue if you want to have um, certificate of participation for this event. Um, let us know through the survey din lang po so that we can send it to you as well. Um... Third and last, uh, third um, item on the announcements, our the recording of the lecture series for tonight and our past events ay nakalodge po sa UP Department of the Geography YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe din po para makita nyo kung ano po yung uh, mga project and undertakings na ginagawa ng UP Department of Geography at ng Philippine Geographical Society. Okay, so since this is a lecture series, um, gusto namin kayong inform sa mga upcoming series but I would like to call Sir Joseph Palis para sa lineup ng ating mga lecture series pa. Thank you very much, Eman. I thought this will come towards the end, but that's fine. I'll just mention it now. So uh, thanks thanks a lot, Miko. Wonderful talk. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, in my closing remarks, I'm going to mention a few more things that you mentioned that I feel I have to sort of summarize for everyone else. But um, this is the second uh, talk we have for this year. The first one we had was last um, month with uh, uh, Marino Giocareza from um, Oxfam 
Great Britain. And then Miko, of course, for this month. Next month, we're going to have uh, Dr. Evangeline uh, Katigbak Montoya. She used to be uh, a faculty in our department, uh, went to Singapore for her PhD. And, and uh, um, she will talk about her uh, one of the many aspects of her research on mobility and migration uh, focused among Filipino migrants in Singapore. So it's going to be Monday, March 15, but we'll send out the public uh, publicity materials for that. And then, of course, our very own president who just spoke will give his own talk on April 14 on, on participatory 3D mapping uh, specific to a few community, uh, uh, specific sitios and barangays. And... Uh, after that, we're gonna invite Michael Hawkins from North Carolina to give uh, initial um, field notes from his research among um, uh, truck drivers in the Pierre area in Manila. Um, he got, it was interesting about Michael was that he, he got a, a Fulbright grant for the whole year and then he had to return back to the US because of, of the COVID. So, so um, uh, he's coming back later this year. To, to continue. And then if you notice the, the last entry there uh, is differently colored. That's because it is the first geography webinar that's also co-sponsored by the Philippine Geographical Society, Pavitra Basodivan, a colleague from, uh, uh, from grad school uh, who teaches at UT Austin is, uh, is gonna give a talk about her experiences about environmental racism in North Carolina um, and uh, uh, connected to Black Lives Matter. So. And then we have a few more, but we'll, we'll just keep you in suspense because we have a lot more to, to, um, to, to uh, give to you, you know, either through the geography webinar or through the PGS. So um, let, me, let me give my own kind of uh, anticlimactic, <laughs> uh, let me give my own um, a closing remarks for, for, for this one. And uh, uh, first of all, Miko, wonderful talk, like I said before. Uh, I like the fact that you mentioned that LGB LGBT Safe Spaces Project is always in collaboration with LGUs. A lot of us always think that uh, you operate in isolation, you know, that, that this is a grassroots thing. It is a grassroots form of ground through thing, but also uh, what is crucial here is partnership and collaboration, which MapBex achieved because of their uh, extent the, the, the range and the extent of their projects, mapping projects. And you need allies um, uh, and um, uh, social network uh, uh, definitely in this one. And I think there was a question earlier about uh, how does the pandemic affect this, this mapping? And, and in the case of Miko, who I, I spoke to uh, on a semi-regular basis last semester, he was, he was in some ways through his project was saying that, you know, it continues, you know, but in a different form of, platform. I also was, was kind of uh, uh, interested when you said something about you also explore digital platforms to reach out to a much greater LGBT community through, through the dating app, um, uh, Tinder and, um, oh, sorry, um, Grindr, and then, and then to make sure that it is a highly democratized kind of, you know, process, right? I, I, and that uh, ground truth thing is always supported by local knowledge. You know, you just can't get data. Of course, you know, I have colleagues here, especially Mom Oni, uh, who, is, who teaches uh, cart uh, cartography and counter cartography, who maintain that it's not just the data, but how they speak to you and what kind of realities are there that are more important. So local knowledge too, this is not just an accumulation of data, but more about uh, lived experience, if that makes sense, right? And then uh, um, also I like the, 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 the thing that Miko mentioned about the safe space should have a, a memorandum of agreement um, if, if there is no ADO no, or the anti-discrimination ordinance because uh, it guarantees you know, that a kind of safe space because of the agreement, right? Well, of course, in our country, sometimes some memorandums do not just get... Uh, observe anyway, despite the presence of those agreements. So, so we have that, 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 that thing that's a guarantee to uh, in this one. And two more things before I finally wrap up, oh, as a wrapping up thing. I also like the idea of emotional cartography that he did about you know, the experiences of people in some areas. We do that also in our project. Most of my colleagues who are here have done it. May I just mention that uh, in one project I did with, with our uh, alumni, we did a geo-narratives project in UP Diliman, uh, just to tell stories. 
and 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 then we put up a uh, I, um for some of you may not be familiar with the card catalog anymore but but um I, I don't mean to insult you by 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 saying that you don't know but you know it's a totally analog year, period you know in our lives but it's like something where you look up it's like a uh, uh kind of sort of a furniture really where you you pull it up then you look at the the call numbers and then you look for the book and like now where it's all digital but but we have that kind of card catalog thing in one of our exhibits wherein the students are supposed to put in stories about UP Diliman so it could be the um, UP fair it could be about mathematics building faculty center all that but also and this is the last point I'm going to make but also we notice that it is really uh, um, uh, maybe a third or probably even almost half of it were, were, were stories that talk about LGBT experiences. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful kind of, 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 of retelling of stories. We have that, by the way, we, we were able to gather those stories um, and because they're also written anonymously. So it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful compendium of these uh, narratives. And in the same way with Map Bex, right? Like these kinds of stories needed to be put out there and made to be more, even more, for lack of a better term, more mainstream, right? So that it reaches a point where in we probably don't need to map anymore because it has reached that point where everything else that we do are, 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 are typical or, you know, something, everybody does it, right? So in a, the last point really is that I like the presentation a lot. And when I wrote that piece earlier about, you know, he's gonna talk about data discourses that go beyond representation is because it is also very performative, right? In a sense. And uh, I, I would like to uh, commend that because it's like the querying of the mapping practice, not just because the data that are gathered are, 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 are LGBT, but also because of, taking away, just like when we study post-colonial studies, you know, when you read the archives in order to tell your own stories from your own point of view, it's like trying to, to, um, to take away the, the, the heteronormativity that mapping used to have as an image and make it more like a lived through LGBT um, uh, um, uh, practice. And, and that's why uh, not because of the data only that they gathered, but also taking over the mapping practice, you know, uh, queer. I was just putting that in my social media earlier about how maps look different when women make it, you know, it's in the same way with this. And I'm excited to see the maps that me could. And I also highly encourage everyone to open an OSM account because like what Miko said, it's a, it's free and it's open access and, and you can, you know, really make a lot of stories there, you know, place-based stories that will be very exciting in the future uh, for all of us. So, so yeah, so to, <laughs> to put them all together, um, this is as much as a very enjoyable, uh, informative um, uh, talk that Miko gave. And I, I hope we can count on you as allies to become supportive of these projects, but also to, to map these uh, areas and also make them more available and make them more um, a part of the conversation in, in our society, I guess. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Palis, for weaving it all together. Um, so we are now going to have our photo op. We kindly request our participants to turn on their camera if they want to be part of the group photo. And um, maybe somebody can give us instructions. Okay, pa. <laughs> uh, ready, everyone? Okay. Uh, the count of three, uh, ready na? Wait, okay. wait lang, wait lang. Um, okay. I'll also prepare my ano para <laughs> kuha din ako ng photo. Wait lang, ah. Okay, pa. Okay. All right, all ready? Right. Okay. All right, all right, okay. On the count of three. Uh, one, two, three. All right. So, first panel. Apo, first panel, Leon. Let's uh, move to the next panel. Okay, let's go. Okay, sure. All right. Next. Okay, okay, this is the next one. One, two, three. 
Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, thank you so much to all of our participants and attendees for tonight. Uh, we'll keep you posted via Twitter and Facebook. Please subscribe to the YouTube channels of UP Department of Geography and PGS so you could be notified about our recent activities. Have a peaceful Saturday evening sa lahat. Thank you po ulit. Maraming